Okay, so I completely understand that that intro may have been a little bit on the dramatic side, but this is actually a big deal for me. I've never in my 15 years of being a photographer actually used constant lighting in the studio. And the reason for that being is that I never had lights that were powerful enough to handle it. I've had, you know, Cobb 150s and different things like that. I've never had anything that was powerful enough to give me the light output that I needed for the type of portraits that I create. And then I got these, these absolute beasts of just pure beauty, the Aperture 600Ds. And these things have been game changing. Now this isn't going to be a review on these lights. I'm going to do another video very, very soon for you guys where I'm comparing these Aperture 600Ds to my Godox 8600 Pros, just to give you a head to head to show you what it is that works best for each kind of system, the pros and the cons, all of the above. But I wanted to take you behind the scenes on my very first shoot using these lights and just talk about just how easy the whole process was. And then not only that, I am going to be giving you details at the end of this video for a giveaway that I'm doing with some Aperture gear. It's going to be, I think you'll enjoy it. Stick around to the end of the video, I will give you all of that info. So with that, let's jump into some behind the scenes. I'm going to show you how I use this light to create some images that I absolutely fell in love with and just talk about the ease of use for this entire system. All right, so here we are in the studio and for this setup, I'm just using one light with one modifier. Granted, it's a big ass modifier. I'm using the Aperture Light Dome 150, which you may have guessed means 150 centimeters of deep octa goodness. Now the thing is with a modifier this big, they are large and they are heavy and they put a lot of weight on whatever light that you're mounting them to. Now with this light and something that was just absolutely amazing about it was the yoke and how strong it is. Now, I don't know if you've ever put a large modifier on a light and as soon as you put it on, it just starts kind of dipping down on you. Well, this thing, it's not geared, it's completely free flowing, but when you tighten this down, it is insanely solid. I put this large modifier on there and I don't think it moved a millimeter. Once I tightened it down, it wasn't going anywhere. And I didn't have to tighten it down to the extreme of like, oh, I hope this doesn't break. It was literally just a regular tighten and it just, it wasn't going anywhere. I am so incredibly impressed with how strong and how well these lights are built. Now for the positioning of the light, I had the modifier about five feet away from the model, angled slightly to allow me to shoot both full body as well as in tighter. And then I feathered the light, meaning that I placed the model towards the back of the modifier and allowed the rest of the modifier to come around to the front, meaning that light feathers across and you get that really beautiful transition of highlights to shadows. Now here's the crazy part about using this lighting, is that I just cranked it up to 100 and then I set it and I forget it. And the rest of it was just done in camera. There was no light meters, there was no math, there was no trying to figure out what aperture I need to shoot at in order to match the, the power output on my light. It was literally set the light, position it, and then use my in-camera what you see is what you get meter in order to do everything else. I just, I chose that I wanted to shoot at F4. So I set my camera to F4 and then I just dialed my shutter speed until it looked how I wanted it to look, which ended up being F4 at 1 1 25th of a second at ISO 200. I mean, that's, it's like a cheat code. So with that, I've got the one light set up and then I've got that giant white reflector that's leaning against the wall and it's pumping in just a little bit of fill, not too much to make a huge difference, but it is there and it is contributing. So I thought I'd mention that. But with that, here are a few of the images from this section of the shoot. All right, so now that we've got a super clean editorial style of image in the bag, I wanted to do something that just had a little bit more depth to it. Something that felt like maybe we were outside, out against a wall with trees and that kind of a thing. So for that, well, for that, I ended up using this, which is the 26 degree spot mount from Aperture. And this thing again is just such a beautiful piece of kit. Now I'm very well known for using optical snoots in my work. I like creating different shapes in my work. 
And this, this is like the holy crap big brother to that snoot. So I'm not gonna go into all of the functions of this. I'm going to wait until I do the video where I compare all of this gear to the 8600 Pro gear. But just to kind of give you a rundown of how I put this all together, I ended up using this gobo here, which essentially just looks like tree branches. And so when I dropped this in, it gave me this beautiful kind of outdoor sunlight coming through a tree look. So when I first set this up and I was using just the spotlight, the shadows were too dark. It didn't feel like natural light. It didn't feel like we were outdoors. There was too much contrast between the highlights and the darks. So I brought in my other 600D with that 150 centimeter deep octa on it. And I set that up to come from roughly the same angle as my spotlight so that it would feel like natural light. If we were outside, all of that natural fill light would be coming from the same direction as the sun. So that's how I set this up so that it would have that natural feel. Now, the nice thing when you're using constant lighting is that you can actually visually watch the shadows get darker or lighten with your fill just by dialing it up and dialing it down. You don't actually have to pop off flashes and try to see what's going on. You can actually visually watch it happen. So when I first set up my fill light and I brought it in at 100%, it took away too much of the contrast. It didn't feel right. It wasn't contrasty enough to feel natural. So I dialed down that fill light to about 75% and just boom, right there. That was it, that's dialed in. And we are off to the races, we are shooting. So for this set of images, I'm still shooting at F4, but at 1 1 60th of a second at ISO 200. And with these two lights combined, this is what that ends up looking like. I have three spotlight mounts from Aperture and I do not need three spotlight mounts from Aperture. So as I was saying at the beginning of this video, I wanna do a giveaway. I've been trying to figure out what I could do when I hit my 50,000 subs mark, which I did, thank you guys so much. I just didn't know what to do until now I got these and I thought this, this is perfect. So what's nice about these is that they are the Bowens mount. So even if you don't have Aperture lighting, if you have Godox lighting, anything like that, anything that uses the Bowens mount, you can use these modifiers with. So, as I was saying, hit that subscribe button, tune in, because when I do the video that's going to be comparing all of this new video lighting to my 8600 Pro lighting, well, that's when I'm going to give one of these away. So, with that, thank you guys so much for being here. I appreciate you, and I will see you in the next video. Cheers.